And now for something completely different. Let's go. Today I'm going to show you five Lightroom secrets that will make your editing process so much smoother. No way. Yes way. Before we start, I'm not going to use any fancy tools, just a mouse and a keyboard and obviously a computer. No touchpad, no iPad, no iPad pens, just keeping it real. And I'm the best in the world at this, so shut up and follow my lead. Step one, find Lightroom and open it. I'm guessing you know how to do this already, but just in case, you know. Always one, isn't there? Once in Lightroom, it should look a bit like this. Put your SD card in and import by clicking up here or down here. Find your SD card on the left hand side. Make sure they're the right photos you want in the middle and then tell the computer where you want them to go on the right hand side. I'll put the date like this so it's always in order on my hard drive with a short description to remind me what I was photographing on that day. Then click import. Now this first one is for when you're shooting panoramas or bracketed images. You can stack them together so you don't get millions of photographs along the bottom. So click Command or CTRL A, right click on all of them, select Stacking, and then Auto Stack by Capture Time. For long exposure stacks, this might be different, but for normal panoramas and bracketed photos, I set this from 10 to 20 seconds. It'll tell you how many stacks you have along the bottom. So if you know you've shot about five panoramas, but it says one, you need to play around with the time. Now along the bottom, you'll see that there are less images and the stacked ones have numbers in the corner. You can click on them to expand or contract them. Then right click, photo merge, and then either HDR or panorama. If you're bracketing shots, obviously HDR. If you're doing a panorama, obviously panorama. Well, duh. Now we're speeding through this one already. So you'll be back to watching cat videos before you know it. It is so easy to dive straight in, find that nice photo you took and start editing it straight away. But this will make the process a lot longer than it has to be. So use those numbers one to five to grade your images. One being the most awful shot you've ever seen. Number five, one step away from pure heaven. I'll start on the first photo I took and use the cursors to go through them. Any photos I like, I'll give a two star rating to. Once I've gone through them all, I'll click here to just show those two star photos. Then I'll go through them again, refining what I like with a three star rating. And then I'll click here to only show those three star photos. I'll do it one more time for four stars and very quickly I'll go from hundreds of photos to just a handful to edit. As for five stars, I keep this reserved for those portfolio worthy photos. So the best of the best. Okay, man, let's turn and burn. Although I do find my mind wanders at this point because it's the most boring part of editing. Now I wonder what computer Arnie edits with. Mac, 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 yes. This next one is a bit of a cheat edit, but it speeds at the time no end. I do this more often than I'd like to admit, but I do tweak it a little, so technically I'm not cheating. It's never cheating when you're in a different area code, not to mention a different state. In the develop module, open up basics on the right hand side and click auto. This will change these basic sliders to where Lightroom thinks they should be. When I do this, I will take the settings further from this point. It's a case of using it as a starting point. This is a bit like presets. They're also starting points. So remember, just add a bit more pizzazz after using auto or any one of my awesome presets. If you're interested, head over to my website, click shop and presets to pick up a set for yourself. Now there's also an individual cheat code. This is great when you're not sure where to take that individual slider. Hold down shift and then double click on the name of the slider. This will add auto to that one slider, but it'll only do it in the basic panel. Like I said, this is great for when you're not sure where to take that slider. You could do this and if you don't like it, take your finger off shift, double click on that name again, it'll bring it back to zero. I guess you guys aren't ready for that yet but your kids are gonna love it. Once you start editing, you might notice that some of your photos you took are very similar, especially if you shoot like this. Once you've added the secret sauce to your first one, it's my fancy sauce, and select all of the images you want to make those same changes to, make sure the first one you edited is selected, 
then clicked Command Shift S or CTRL Shift S. Select all the bits you want to change and then click Synchronize. This will basically copy and paste all of those settings that you changed into all of the images that you selected. Again, a little bit of a cheat, but what this does is speed up this editing process, giving you more time out in the field. So now onto the next tip, I think. Oh, okay, where where do you think? Oi, where are you going? Come back. We, we haven't finished yet. Instant coffee. That's classy. At least Peter McKinnon drinks decent coffee. No, no, no. Anyway, whilst he's taking a break, this is actually a really good point. You need to take breaks and step away from the screen from time to time. Otherwise, you can very easily over edit your photos. Right, that's enough. Come on, come on. We need to finish this tutorial. So the new tool Lightroom introduced in 2022 is masking. Okay. And this is the tool that will help you with your photo skills. I have a very particular set of skills. Let's say I want the sky to be fading off into the distance. The old way to do it is to add a linear gradient and hope none of the changes affect any parts of the landscape. But now there's this secret function called intersect. So first of all, click on masking and then linear gradient and add this by clicking and dragging down from the top of your image. Then make the changes you want in this panel on the right hand side. Then I'll hold down Option or Alt and click on this new button that has appeared called Intersect. Then I'll click Sky. This just makes the changes where those two masks intersect, hence the name. If I click it on and off, you can see when Intersect is turned off, the peaks are darker. You can also do this with certain colors and things like that. You can combine any of these masks together. Let's say I wanted to accentuate the greens around this waterfall but not the greens towards the edges of the frame. First of all, I'd select Range and then Color Range, then click on the greens. You can see what it'll change with this red mask it's put on the photo. Then I'll make the changes to this mask, but it has changed everything within that green range. So now I'll click Option or Alt and Intersect then select brush. Now this change will only appear where I paint with this brush and where those greens are in the initial photo. This intersect tool is endless and you can add as many masks as you want. Now back to what I was talking about earlier where Lightroom can help you with your photos. If you took a photo and you're not sure whether or not it's any good, go to the masking tool and click on subject. Now what does that subject select? If it selects what you think the subject is in the photo, chances are you've done a good job. But if it struggles to select anything, or if it selects something completely different to what you thought the subject was, then you might have to rethink the composition. Try looking at another photo that you've taken, or try to find ways of incorporating stronger subjects in your frames. Now this doesn't always work, but it can show you whether a photo you thought was good is actually good. Well, what the computer or the AI system built into Lightroom thinks is good anyway. So that's it. I think we've grown a little today. I hope you can take something from this. Nice. After all, editing is a big part of photography. So the quicker you can edit, the more time you have just to get out there and take more photos. So just get out there and do it.